the, the great mythical harp, uh, but all these things. The only thing I'd say about events taking place and putting them in, into perspective, a child playing on the beach uh, interprets the tide uh, as they're playing sometimes as their own power and ability to change the sea. And it's just that we 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 get a little bit of the illness of the elite sometimes when the elite truly believe, they really truly believe themselves to be gods. They really truly believe themselves to be gods and are in such a deluded faith that five minutes before they die, they realize that they've been living in a giant illusion. That okay. gods, you know, by definition, um, have far more power uh, than they do. And I, and I do think we are living in, in, a, in, a, in a period where we are going to see more and more events of such power that it is unprecedented and, and, and almost awe-inspiring um, in, in stunning us into silence. The thing that I, I fear also is when this happens, people who are suffering illness we get a tinge of that, again, to sometimes feel that they can associate it with some great cryptic um, government program. Look, the government um, does programs. Let me tell you one example of, of where the theory never comes through with the reality. The American government spent a huge amount of money on chemical weapons, as you know, huge amount. Yeah. And it's only in the last 15 years that they came to the conclusion that there's one thing they couldn't solve. And you know what it was? What's that? Was the movement of air. What's the point of having a chemical weapon if you can't control the air? <laughs> I mean, every, yeah. every single experiment they did, you know, you only needed the air to change by... Uh, because the air, in ter- it's not just the air in terms of pressure... It's the wow. movement, it's the proximity. If you've ever seen the behaviour of, of gases in a closed space, you realise you're de- dealing with something that has its own intelligence. You know, you think of, of smoke rising to the top of a room. Uh, yes, it rises, but it moves, it changes, it, 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 it concentrates. It doesn't just go to one corner, it goes to another corner and it moves. It, it is literally having a life of its own. And you've seen it with fire and smoke that the smoke moves like a living being, yeah? Yeah. So I would just simply say whatever the cause, whether it be part of the bigger picture we were talking about with Ron or whether it be something else, um, I know that we are living in an incredible age where we will see the supernatural um, become almost um, every day, but not to lose sight of of what we of what incredible science we're seeing and to stay humble so yeah um i know there's more than simply uh consciousness helping us and i yes. know you know that there's more yes. th- there's more helping us than we would realize but only because we're willing to help ourselves and that's why the five worlds what you're doing is so yes. important yeah yeah i understand um here's the one thing I don't, we will not know if Montauk was hit by this, but it was right there at Montauk. And then it rolled, it, it rolled westward, southwest into Allentown. Yep. Okay, so they might have went after Montauk and then, and then just, it, it just spread down through. So, because Montauk, if you, do you know anything about the Montauk projects? That's not really, Montauk, no. United States um, Mind Control, Montauk. I was with the gentleman this weekend, which just went by, which he's written three books on it. So um, I also have him in contact with when, when, and hopefully we're able to pull this off and sit down and um, actually, Terry, if you, if when this goes down, if you'll be the commentator, because you have a great voice. Um, and then also, you know, presenting people to people because it, it will be two communities which actually do believe in the same thing. It's just 
we're not aware of each other right now, and there's a lot more of them than there is of us right now. Yes. Because we're, we're looking at uh, over, that's over over a million people, you know, in, in their, their three little groups, the uh, MUFON, um, the UFO people, and now also uh, investigators. Yes. Okay. So, and they and they already have an open agreement. I'm sending the one agreement, but I'm going to also get a hold of the uh, second agreement they have where they actually declare peace. Yes. Uh, in the world. So, and I'll get a hold of that and send that. And um, because I'm not quite... I'm not on, you know, I'm not in their in their circle. I understand them, and, and yes, I do agree with them for the most part. I just don't, you know, I'm not, I've never seen anything, so. But I know I come from, the people I come from are not from here, so. Yeah. And, and that goes for you two down there. Uh, uh, the gentleman down, uh, the ancestor down in, uh, um, what is um down in Australia? Yes, yes. That also comes from his people too. The deep legends are true, so and remember Wait, one just... thing I always I always try to end off with this. You always have and always will be. Don't fear a damn thing. Because no matter what, all they can do is just change it. But as long as you're strong you can keep your mind and go on your next lifetime with everything you have now as yep. far as I mean, possessions are nothing. You can give them all away because it really doesn't matter. They're not going to be needed in the future anyhow, so. So well, let me let you go with that, Ona. No, I really appreciate it. And, and look, keep, keep strong with what you're doing and, and, and everyone, everyone. Give me a call. Yeah, I will give you a call. But everyone is okay. playing a part. And I really, I will give you a call. Thank you. Ona. Here. All right. Thank you all. Okay, uh, Frank, we could wrap up on this last question. What is your take on the, this carbon tax? And if you want to do a summary um, and wrap up after that, that would be sure. wonderful. So what is the question? What is my take on? Carbon tax. Oh, carbon tax. <laughs> um, uh, carbon tax is um, a uh, complete an utter uh, waste of time, but it is a way for uh, banks and for the elite to get another tax and more control. Uh, because the carbon tax and the system is based on a concept called carbon credits. And what people don't realise, people think that the whole idea is to reduce pollution. What carbon tax does, it, it gives the elite two things that, that are great for them. It gives them a tool to go to in, any industry they want and uh, they can exclude certain industries and they can penalise others. And the certificates that are traded on tax is a whole new market that is effectively... Um, unregulated in the way these things happen and banks and people who are in the know stand to make billions of dollars billions of dollars off the trading of, of new types of securities where there's literally nothing underpinning them it's extraordinary now in Australia we're about to do a uh, carbon tax and the stripping of wealth out of Australia into the hands of some uh, European and uh, some Asian and indeed some American uh, legal and financial minds uh, is going to be billions of dollars. It is um, complete and utter madness and will do nothing to the environment, nothing. Well, Frank, there was a question I missed. Hopefully uh, if you can cover it real quick. And um, it was a question regarding the Great Pope. Could you answer the question about what the Great Pope represents uh, and where that comes from? And just, uh, sure. 
the the grey pope, and we we wrote to um, technically the head of the Order of Friars Minor and, and discovered that unlike the Jesuits and the uh, Benedict, uh, this particular order chose to send back correspondence without reading it. Upon going back to one hyphen evil and looking at the history, the great popes uh, dealt, the, the great pope represents the, the head of the Franciscans, but the real head of the Franciscans. The Franciscans are the most important order of the Catholic Church because it is an order created by the Venetians. And what is probably one of the most contentious things to say, but, but rarely realized, the Roman Catholic Church is a private-owned company. It is a private institution. It is not a public institution. It is, a, it is private property owned by a set of families that are set up in a communist-type uh, model based in Venice. And the Franciscans are a key order of the Venetians in controlling that. So the Jesuits are a suborder of the Franciscans. I mean, this is, well, they don't say it's open and public knowledge, but they do concede and they openly state in any history that Loyola and all the originating, uh, originating um, Jesuits were made priests in Venice in Franciscan-controlled churches. So they pretty much tell you it's a suborder without going and saying the Jesuits are a suborder of the Franciscans. The great pope is typically a member of one of those elite families, the Orsini, the Aldebrandi, the Cayetani. Um, uh, there's a range of them there. Uh, the Farnese. In fact, Farnese, which is the most powerful branch, um, gave themselves the name Farnese. The Farnese are actually the, the originating head branch of the Pioloni, which these are all from. The Pioloni were the founders of Venice and, uh, in fact, direct their descendancy back to the Magyar. So the Pioloni become these families. These families control the Roman Catholic Church. That's the great pope. Okay, very good. Uh, well, Frank, did you have any other wrap-up summary on what we covered tonight or uh, any uh, quick last remarks? And are we on next week? And Absolutely on next week. And, Terry, thank you so much. And, and uh, gee, I was so happy you're on because of all the, the breakups of the, uh, of the call. Look, I just want to end with, the, with this, um, three things. The first is whatever the future holds, in terms of Ellenin, of our own life and our own mortality. So long as we stay true and so long as we don't live in a state of fear, the reason that the world is the way it is is because we and others, our ancestors, at some point felt that they could no longer fight the fight and gave in to that system of fear. Fear is what is used as the ultimate tool of the elite. So rather than live in fear, live in the value of every day, live in the value of what we know, search out with others and, and communicate. And please, please communicate this information of Eucadia and the canons, not as Eucadia necessarily, but as knowledge not as promoting something that people might react as a cult, but simply to say that there is a way of understanding why we are where we are. We, I will finish the, the uh, positive law. Uh, the, the package for the 15th of August will be ready to show those that are offered to help uh, by this week. And whatever happens, we will keep going. We will not give up. And Terry, I want to thank you and I want to thank everyone on this call who remain persistent and keep helping. Thank you. Uh, it really helps, and I think it helps a great many people. So thanks to all the listen, and Terry, thank you, and I look forward to speaking with you and everyone else next week, same time. Very good. Thank you, Frank, and thank you very much for spending extra time tonight. Thank you, everyone, that helped bring all this together, and thanks for joining us. 
And we will see everyone next week, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Same time, same place.